My name is Carm Taglienti. Thank you all for attending. I'm what's called a distinguished engineer at the organization. I've done a lot of migrations for customers that are moving to the cloud. And so I want to share with you some of the things that we've learned as we go through the process. If you've ever tried to modernize your application estate, you probably know that there are a lot of challenges associated with it. So you really have to have a strategy if you're going to do this properly. Um, Insight actually covers a lot of different areas. I won't get into too much exactly what we do, but we do a lot of work in the space. And so if you do need assistance with this, and I'll wrap with this as well, you can come talk to us over at our booth. But current state of enterprise applications are moving to the cloud. It's basically, if you think at and look at some of the analysts' numbers, 364 custom apps deployed today, but only 45% are used. So it's a lot of stuff that's not being used within your application estate. How do you find it? How do you know what to do with it? How much does it cost to manage and maintain it? So these are all important characteristics that you want to think about as you look at application modernization. So one of the things that I really want to focus on too, and I'll get to this in just a minute, you have to have a plan. You have to know how to execute. That's really what this is all about. And so if you try to make it up, it usually doesn't work too well if you make it up as you go. So there are lots of business imperatives that you're faced with. Cost is one of them competitive advantage, operational efficiency, management, maintenance. So there are a lot of concerns as it relates to either legacy applications or even applications that maybe are experiencing what we call technical debt, meaning that at, they're getting too difficult to manage and maintain, they're not accomplishing what we do. And what we're seeing a lot of these days is it's difficult to secure those applications based off of the technical debt that you might have. So, whether you have a single application or a lot of applications, and we'll talk about this as well, it's always a journey. So as you think about it, don't expect to get everything done in one day, one week, one month. Plan for the fact that you're creating a culture of application innovation. So, and you see this all the time, right? Um, at, at the sessions today, the keynotes, we talk about new technologies, new capabilities, new paths services. How do you create that sort of, it's called mechanical sympathy. How do you integrate these new things into your application environment? And that's part of the journey. So it's not just a one and done. You want to make sure that you really understand how to create a culture or a strategy where you can really look at this as sort of a progression or a journey. All right, so let's get to some of the details on how we want to do this. So we created a playbook which helps you to really understand how you're going to attack this difficult problem um, and in many ways, it's a, it's a problem that's just natural. Technology continues to evolve. So it's not a problem with the business, the fact that you have to think about modernization, but it's more just looking at it from the perspective of how am I going to approach this? So we typically start with um, aligning and assessing within our environment. So alignment really focuses on, do we understand what the business imperatives really are? Now I know we're at a technical conference and we're talking about technology, but Every one of us is really looking at when we want to accomplish something, there has to be some kind of business benefit as we approach it. So that's what we're really looking to do. What is it that you're going to do in terms of your application modernization strategy that is associated with your business? Okay, so then we start to think about what are you doing when and why, and I'll get to this in just a minute. Then we do an assessment. What do you have out there that you want to be able to modernize. So half of the battle is just understanding what is your application estate and what does it look like? So that's really what we do here. And there are lots of tools that will help you do this. It's not, you don't have to go to ServiceNow and pull everything out of your catalog. It's, you can use tools to scan your network, your applications, your application dependencies. We have lots of tools that allow us to be able to help us to do that. So it's not an arduous process, but it's a super important process. Then we get into the planning cycle once we know what those assets are. Once you've actually see, you can see what's out there, you can then start to determine from a planning perspective what are the modernization areas and how does it align to the business imperatives that we're talking about. So that's really critical as we think about the strategy overall. So, and probably people, you probably heard of the five R's, the seven R's. We use seven R's in our particular um, strategy, but basically, if you have an application estate, many organizations, you know, you look at applications and say, well, we should probably be retiring these applications. That's great. That's not a problem. You don't want to touch them or just retain them, leave them as they are. Maybe some of your applications are end of life. That's fine. 
Um, but there are others where you're looking to replace, rehost, refactor, rearchitect. So that's where you're going to spend more time and effort, but you've already aligned it to the business imperative. So you really understand why you want to do this, and that's really what we're driving toward. You can then go through the ROI, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then finally, if there are applications maybe that we, we call it re-envisioning, but applications that maybe I just want to rewrite it. Maybe it's not doing what it's supposed to do. I want to start from scratch. Um, so, and that's okay too. You identify it, you justify it, and then you can move forward and head into the plan. Okay. Now, one of the things I'll talk about as well is that these will be iterative cycles. So agility is really key here. And one of the first things that I mentioned was ensuring that you're not going to be able to do this in, you know, in a month. So you have to plan for the journey, and we'll eventually talk about it. But by and large, and this is where we work closely with AWS, we can work with you to help to get funding for these kinds of programs where this modernization strategy, the playbook that I just talked to you about, Amazon will um, look, will, they'll partner with us to be able to help fund these kinds of analysis um, stages to get you on the road. And so they align with us through the MAP program, where we execute on the seven hours that I just talked about. Identifying with the business strategy, though, is critical because it's like I said before, you're not going to be able to go to your senior executive teams and say, hey, I want to modernize my entire estate without understanding what is the business impact. So that's critical, and I won't get into this in too much detail. You can hopefully look at the slides afterwards. I've got a lot of them. But the slides are really critical because I think that you can go back and look at them and sort of remind yourself of what I was talking about. So the strategy, once we collect the information about what are your applications, what are your dependencies, you can then start to create this alignment where you start to know, and if you remember the seven hours from the other um, slide I was talking about, retain and retire, things at the bottom are probably not things we're going to focus on too much. We're looking for the highest impact areas. So right in that middle spot is kind of the sweet spot where we want to say rehost, refactor, rearchitect. That's where we want to say, these are really important to our business. These are the applications that we want to look at using a cloud-first strategy. And then we can start to move in, that, in those areas. OK. Now, this is kind of cool, too, because I think we do this with customers all the time. We really look at, how do we bucket these things up? Like I said, you can't do everything in one fell swoop. So you start to create this concept of bucketization, or you can even think of it as categorization. So I can categorize the kinds of things that I want to do. I put my applications in these sort of, uh, into these buckets. And then I can get a good perspective on where do I want to make my investments. And then how can I start to monitor the impact that I can see when it comes down to measuring or quantifying the business impact of performing each of these activities. OK. Next. So now we've got all of this. And if you, know, if you have one application, you probably don't have to focus too much on the fact that you, know, there's, you have to prioritize. But most organizations, you remember the earlier slide, there's hundreds of applications within most enterprises. And so we're looking at, we need to create some kind of prioritization strategy. Why would we create a prioritization strategy? Because like I said before, we want to make sure that we're dealing with the highest impact things first or what's most important to the business, and then sort of moving us through the, um, the iterative set of um, applications that will continue to provide impact for us. And this is really important. So we spend a lot of time working with customers, and that's why we collected all of the business imperatives in the beginning, is it allows us to be able to identify what is that first wave. Now, some of the things that we also want to do as we get through the process is learn because if you've ever um, done these kinds of um, application migrations, modernizations, you'll know that you learn a lot when you start because not everything is known. I mean, as many of these as I've done, I never, it's never the same things twice. So what we do is we learn from the first one and we also educate. So within your organization, you're sort of developing this culture of, I was talking about mechanical sympathy or technology innovation you're also innovating your, um, your work staff. So people are learning new technology, PaaS services, Kubernetes, new approaches. That's what we're doing in wave one. The next wave is where we start to get more toward how do we scale? How do we do this more efficiently and more effectively? How do we build processes within the organization so that we can actually start moving more toward common processes 
and then eventually working through all of the, um, the entire application estate based on the categorization. So it's a very disciplined process, which is what I'm getting at. So it's not just a matter of, the, of, the, of realizing or saying that you're going to go through the process. You really have to have a good approach, and then you have to know what to do. And so this next slide will actually is kind of gives you the idea of what to do. Um, so here, and I know it's a bit of an eye chart for you, but in general, you have to have this level of granularity. You have to know what it is that you need to do. For example, retirement is not as simple as just saying I'm turning my application off. You have to think about what are the impacts of retiring applications. If there are users that might use it, how do I communicate end dates, shut down servers, maybe recoup capital costs, etc. But here, as I was talking about before, and you can read this later too with the slides because we only have 15 minutes, but in general, we tend to focus in these areas, like a classical migration is a rehost. So landing zones, you are familiar with that. So we create landing zones with securitization, automation, allows us to be able to build the environment conveniently and quickly, move into the environment to rehost or refactoring. Where, what path services might we use? Which capabilities might we want to um, produce? Or how do we align it to the staff um, or to what our staff knows in terms of technical capabilities so that we can take advantage of that? And then re-architecting, of course, this is the one I like to do the most because you're really looking at what are the new technologies that are available out there, what's happening in the modernized world, like I talked about Kubernetes before, or even new path services, or multi-cloud multi, um, multi applications. So we can start to think about that as well. It doesn't always have to be this, but this is kind of where we, you know, we come to a conference like this and you hear a lot about the re-architecting models, which is great but what new technologies allow us to be able to get there? And then how do I sort of um, categorize my workload into these particular areas? And so as part of this, and I'll show this again, these are iterative cycles. Okay, so we're going through the process. We're learning. So like I said before, it's not a, you don't spend six months just analyzing and then another six months planning and then a three years migrating or modernizing. It's iterative because we learn more. AWS produces new capabilities and new features that we might want to take advantage of. That's really what this is all about. And so what you're doing is you're not just modernizing your entire application estate, you're also educating your, your, um, your staff and as well as um, your business to be able to continue to stay competitive, become more operationally efficient. Okay, so. Just kind of wrapping up here quickly. Um, we've done a lot of this work. And so it, what happens in a lot of cases is if you're not familiar with this kind of a strategy, it's great to partner with companies that know how to do this. Okay, so because, you know, invariably, if you try it, it'll take a while to understand what to do. You can look at my slides and say, oh, I have an approach. But when you actually get to the execution cycle, it's a little more difficult than you think. So, but it's good to know there is a proven strategy there's a way to get there, and companies like ours can help you to get through the process. So innovation, though, is the, is the target. We want to make sure we get to that innovation because you're trying to educate your organization and you're trying to make sure that you can be competitive or operationally efficient. Okay, so what are some of the mistakes that you can make along the way? First one is we're not just porting applications. So I went through the seven R's. There's so many different categories. You know, migration is one of them, but it's one of seven. So you really need to think about what some of the different characteristics are. The second one is that making sure you think strategically but act tactically. So I talked about a strategy. And then I also talked about what is a tactical implementation strategy that you would use. So make sure that you're doing both. And then finally, it's okay to learn in the beginning. So failure in the beginning is okay because you're learning. These are new technologies, new capabilities. You're disrupting the organization slightly as you learn new technical capabilities. OK. So I think we're yeah, just about out of time. But if you want to talk more about it, stop over to our booth. We have, um, we have alignment sessions. We could talk about envisioning this with you. Um, and these are just some examples. But as I said, if you have questions, stop by our booth. We're right over here by the Riot Games. Um, love to talk to you more about it. Or I'll be standing over here afterwards if you want to talk to me in a little bit more detail. OK, so with that, thank you all for attending. Hopefully you found it informative. 
And um, thanks again.